I've always found it kind of odd how everybody's always talking about their anti-aliasing, but never about, like, their grandma aliasing or their cousin aliasing. Eh, whatever. Hello, all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today we are going to talk about two effects which I think probably most people honestly aren't that interested in in the modern day, and that is going to be anti-aliasing and V-Sync. So I'd honestly forgotten that functions pertaining to this were actually even still part of Game Maker until I was looking through the documentation for something unrelated a few weeks ago and randomly happened across this. Let's start with anti-aliasing. So, uh, this is the Hyrule Circuit uh, demo map uh, that I have imported into Game Maker uh, that I was using when we were talking about mint mapping a little while ago. Uh, if you look at certain edges in the scene, such as uh, particularly edges of high contrast, such as where the... Uh, this castle meets the sky. Uh, you can especially notice it on the steeple up here by my mouse cursor. You might notice that there's a bit of a jagged pattern where individual pixels are resolved. Those are actually in the computer graphics literature called jaggies. I wish I was making that up. And um, you can see it in other places in the scene. You can see it in uh, less complex 3D scenes even. You can see it in, in 2D games if you look closely. Um, for example, around the edges of, like, the mountains in the distance, you can kind of see it. You can see it around, like, the, um, like, the shoreline of this pond over here. And, uh, the reason that I say that probably not as many people are interested in this in the modern day is that this effect, this alias effect, is a lot less in your face if you're viewing at a, um, if you're viewing a 1080p screen versus if you're viewing something on a standard definition 640-480 screen or something like that just because there's more pixels and the alias pixels are going to be smaller. And I'm not saying that this is something that like totally nobody cares about, but it tends to not be at the forefront of like discussions about how a game looks anymore. Uh, there is a way you can deal with this in Game Maker. Uh, there is a function which is known as display reset. Uh, this function display reset is gonna take two arguments. One of them is going to be the anti-aliasing level. By default, that's gonna be zero. Uh, one of them is going to be vsync. I will talk about vsync uh, after this, but for now I'm just going to set that to false. Uh, Anti-aliasing level. This is going to engage hardware anti-aliasing. In current year, pretty much all uh, like video cards ever, including integrated graphics and whatnot, uh, are capable of supporting either no anti-aliasing, 2x, 4, 4x, or 8x MSAA. Uh, this is, in case anyone was wondering, multi-sample anti-aliasing. It is a hardware slash graphics driver uh, effect. 8x is most expensive, but it tends to look smoothest. Uh, 4x is in the middle. 2x is cheapest among anti-aliasing options, but it I, I can't even say that 2x looks bad because honestly, personally, I think 2x does the job just fine, but um, it uses the fewest samples to achieve anti-aliasing, and it will generally be less precise overall. So for that reason, it will generally be a little bit less precise overall. If I were to run this again, um, and if I were to now look at the, uh, at, look at the steeple on the castle, you can say that the edge of the steeple is a lot smoother than it looked earlier. We are now using two sample MSAA in order to anti-alias these edges. So I think it's important to note that this is not a blur effect per se, but if you were to really zoom in on each of these individual pixels, well, one, it wouldn't look like much because each of the individual pixels would be just enormous, but two, um, what it's actually doing, instead of blurring pixels, MSAA is a kind of super sampling, which, uh, super sampling is basically drawing the scene at a higher resolution and, and then shrinking it down and then letting, um, pixels that are nearby average together. MSAA is slightly more efficient than regular super sampling because, like, pixels in the interior of triangles won't be rendered multiple times if, um, like, if a pixel is completely bounded by a triangle, but pixels along the edges of, of triangles will have uh, basically multiple fragments resolved for them. So you can think of it as if a triangle only like barely grazes a pixel and it only, like if you were to split the pixel into four parts, if only one of the four quadrants of the pixel would be resolved as part of the triangle, then those pixels along the edges of the triangle will be sampled mul multiple times. But if a single pixel is completely contained within a triangle, then it, then it won't be. There's a bit more to the algorithm, but uh, as a high level description of what it's doing, that should, um. That should suffice. So if you want to see what 8x MSAA looks like in the scene and what kind of performance cost it might or might not incur, uh, let me just run this scene with display reset set to eight. Uh, we can we can look at the steeple and I'm not going to say that it doesn't look smoother than 2x MSAA, but to me personally, the difference certainly isn't big enough for me to justify 
uh, cutting off about 30% of the total performance of rendering the scene due to the way that we're super sampling. It's still fairly common in games to provide an option for what degree of anti-aliasing, if any, the user wants to uh, enable. And like, if nothing else, giving the user the, the choice in that department isn't a bad thing, right? So, I mentioned a little while ago that pretty much all graphics video cards that aren't totally ancient will support uh, 2x, 4x, or 8x MSAA. Uh, if you would like to test the uh, device to see what levels of MSAA it can support, um, I'm not sure if what I just said is true on mobile devices. Uh, cheap, like Android phones, might not support 8x MSAA. I have no idea. Uh, there is a display AA built-in value to GameMaker, which can be used. Uh, this is a uh, this is a read-only variable that's built into GameMaker that you can test to see if which levels of anti-aliasing your device supports. Uh, this is going to be a binary mask containing different values. Um, so if your device supports 2 sample, 4 sample, and 8 sample MSAA, uh, the value contained within display AA will be 2 masked with 4 masked with 8, uh, which will ha happen to result to 14. But um, the way that you would test this would be to take the display AA value. Uh, you would do a binary AND against it with either 2 or 4 or 8. And then if this value uh, is greater than zero, then uh, you know that the device you're running your game on supports for, in this example, 8x MSAA. Um, if you wanted to test if you supported 4x MSAA, you would AND that with uh, with a 4. Especially if you're making a mobile game and you want to like test that your device supports a certain MSAA level before trying to set it, it's, it's probably worth doing this. I don't know what would happen if you tried to put in a value that wasn't supported, like... 64x MSAA would be insane, right? But let's see what happens if I try to run the game with this. I'm assuming it'll just crash. I don't know if it'll crash with like a game maker error or a like Nvidia error or if it just won't do it at all. It seems to have just not done anything at all. All right, that's also uh, a, a solution that, yeah, all right. Unsupported values just won't do anything. So. Next, let's talk about VSync. So VSync is a solution to a problem known as screen tearing. If you've ever been playing a game and you've noticed uh, some kind of graphical issue, such as like if it looks like part of your screen, especially when you do things like move the camera or walk around, um, it's usually more noticeable when the scene is in motion. If it looks like part of your frame, usually the bottom half is lagging one frame behind the other part of your frame, usually the top half. Uh, that is known as screen tearing. It looks something like this, and I say it looks something like this because I'm having to simulate this in video editing because I actually haven't been able to get GameMaker to display screen tearing in quite a while. Uh, like it was, you sometimes saw it back in like GameMaker 8 if you were doing weird things, but I haven't for the life of me been able to induce this in modern GameMaker. I don't know if GameMaker autom automatically has some version of VSync enabled um, in the background. Like, if it's just triple buffering in the background or something, even if you don't have hardware vSync turned on. But if you're making your game and you do, for whatever reason, see an effect such as um, such as screen tearing, uh, you can use the second argument inside display reset to, uh, to turn vSync on. And that will basically ensure that the entire frame is rendered be before the next frame is delivered to the screen. Um, usually... If you were to see VSync, it would be because um, your game is lagging behind its target frame rate and like it's not finished rendering one frame before it um, before it tries delivering the next. Anyway, the other thing that VSync will do is it will actually limit your frame rate, even if you you were running the game at an uncapped frame rate like I was. Uh, it will limit it to the refresh rate of your actual screen, and if it drops below that, it will limit your game's frame rate to a um a factor of the refresh rate of your game screen. So if like you are inconsistently getting 40 to 50 FPS on a 60 Hertz display, uh, VSync would limit that to 30 FPS. And uh, again, honestly, that is something that I'm fine with because I think inconsistent frame rates are a lot more noticeable than just 30, fr like 30 FPS frame rates. But um, yeah, that's VSync. You can engage it if you, um, if you think you need it. You can also add it as an option to your game's menu. Let me know if you have actually been able to induce screen tearing in a Game Maker game recently, because I tried fairly hard to do that um, before I made this video, and I, I wasn't able to do it. Anyway, um, I think that's going to end things off here. This is not a complex subject, 
I just thought this was mildly interesting, so I decided to make a video on it. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to post videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if 3D stuff or uh, shader stuff appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard Ducks and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Steam page for that can be found down below as well. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.